Hey y'all. Oh my God, I've had a week. Hi, it's Kendall. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home scale biscuit? It's Saturday, bad movies, all that. If you're new, you probably feel like, wow, she feels very familiar with us <laughs> instead of explaining what bad movies and a beat is. It's this series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But bitch, I've had a week. I missed last week. You may or may not have noticed. After three years, I got struck with the covasi. I know, uh, no worries, I had a very mild case, I'm negative now. It was just like congestion and exhaustion. That's the main one. I would sleep for like 16 hours out of the day and the hours that I wasn't sleep, I didn't wanna work. I'm sure you resonate <laughs> with that. So all I did was sleep and play Ragnarok. Very good game, very good game. Long as hell, especially cause they, they refuse to let you just go by without eight billion side quests. I didn't even do half of them and I was playing for hours, for days. It took a whole week. <laughs> oh yeah, my nose ring came out because I was blowing my nose. I couldn't figure out how to get it back in. Sent me into an emotional spiral, emotional damage if you will. And I couldn't get it re-pierced because I had the covisi. Is there any more rambles? Oh, I just bought an indoor garden. Personalized ads be getting my ass. <laughs> I'm an impulse shopper, I need to stop. But I could be doing drugs. I feel like <laughs> it's, it's okay, this is my <laughs> rationale. It will allow me to go to the grocery store less for uh, buying produce, which is actually my least favorite thing to get. Specifically, buying lettuce. I don't know what, I don't know what it is about buying lettuce particularly that pisses me off. I think it's because whenever you buy it, it's gonna die in three days and it's gonna be like a waste of time. And now you went to the grocery store just to get lettuce and you couldn't make a big enough salad in time. So theoretically, if it still has roots, it won't die quick enough for me to like not use it. And then I'll eat more salads. Cause a girl loves a salad. Uh, I say all that to say, if you would like to fund my impulse shopping, uh, feel free to watch this here ad. <laughs> <laughs> Send it over to Admiral Kenny, thank you. Hello everyone, it's Admiral Kenny and today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Their wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers offer premium sound, useful features, quality, comfort, and fit, as well as a battery life that doesn't die for 54 hours. They're a great gift for the holiday season and they're half the price of other premium audio brands. You can switch out the size of the cushion so that you can get the fit that's best for your ear so they don't fall out while you're doing great things like jump roping, walking around the house, listening to podcasts, listening to music. There's also different sound styles. Personally, I'm a bass girl. Raycon offers holiday gift guides if you want a little help and take away some of the stress of the buying experience during this holiday season. And as a countdown to Christmas, Raycon will be doing a flash deal every single day leading up to it. For instance, today's deal, you can get 15% off of the everyday speaker. It's so cute. Oh my God. Wait, they have a pink one. Yeah. If you'd like to check out Raycon, you can now actually get them in stores at Kohl's or Walmart. But as usual, the best deals are gonna be online, especially when they offer free shipping, free returns, and buy now, pay later options. There's no risk with a 30 day money back guarantee. And if it's getting too close to the holidays and you forgot to get something and you waited last minute, you can actually get free express shipping if you order between the 13th and the 20th of December on orders over $85 or more when you use code holiday. So if you would like to check out Raycon, go to buy Raycon com slash Kenny to get 15% off site wide when you use code holiday. Big thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. I really need to start doing like YouTube shorts or something about specifically makeup. Cause I do get people that ask me like Kendall, I do miss your makeup content though, because you were the plug. So like, can you make it again? <laughs> And it's like, it's really like logistically difficult to do because admittedly researching, scripting, watching movies every week takes up a lot of time, but I do do my makeup. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. If I should talk more specifically about the makeup itself during like a YouTube short, let me know. Last time we were here though, we talked about Lindsay Lohan's new movie for Christmas. She's returned to the screen in her uh, Netflix piece of shit Christmas movie called Falling for Christmas. I watched it with one of my best friends, Chibi. Honestly, it was one of my favorite videos I've done in recent memory. Apparently you guys really loved it. So I'll bring her back before the year is out because I have plenty more terrible Christmas movies to watch. But yeah, I highly recommend that video if you haven't seen it yet because it was again 
one of my personal favorites. So if you would like to check that out, that'll be linked up above, or you can check it out in the Bat Movies in a Beat playlist. Okay, so this week, well, this month, honestly, for once, I don't usually do this every year. When I'm doing Bat Movies in a Beat, I probably do like one Christmas movie to just celebrate the end of the season. This year, I really wanted to focus on all shitty Christmas movies all December because, and, it, and I would have started last week if I didn't get the Kavussi. I think this is the closest thing that I foresee myself ever doing to like a vlogmas. Y'all ain't never catching me do vlogmas. I'm not a real influencer. <laughs> like that is so much work, so much pressure to edit on time. And of course I'm filming this on the day before it goes live every week. But shout outs to people that do it because y'all are hard ass workers. I'm just kind of here. But yeah, I'm not a real influencer. I just have a bunch of people that watch me for some reason every week. Um, speaking of which, I'm gonna need y'all to uh, get people to subscribe. Like ask your grandma or something because I'm currently sitting at 666K and I don't feel like hearing the satanic panic people at my door. It's very annoying. But the goal is for this year up until the 24th, so the day before Christmas, is to upload nothing but shitty Christmas movies. And that is why we're starting this week with the doozy. Today, as usual, we're referencing a movie that you guys recommended to me on Twitter. Someone said, Kendall, you should watch a trailer for a movie called Fat Man, starring for some reason, Mel Gibson, who's a shit human, by the way, uh, allegedly, uh, we know, who plays uh, Santa, who is in a fight against a hired assassin who was commissioned by a rich 12 year old who was pissed off that he got coal for Christmas. It came out in 2020. I don't know what other excuse I really have for you. Um, a lot of things happened that year. But with a premise like a child putting a hit out on Santa, you know, I was intrigued. Sound like something that uh, would be at least entertaining, if nothing else. I decided to look at the trailer for the said movie. And uh, <laughs> there was one particular part of the trailer that really got me and told me that this, this is gonna be quite the viewing experience and I, for one, need to partake. I'd like you to kill Santa Claus. That evil munchkin was acting down, honey. And I'll say that after watching this movie, he acted his bad little ass off. And if I were ever to recommend somebody to watch the movie, it would be solely for his character. Now the movie came out again in 2020 and it was a complete bust. I think I read the budget was something around $20 million and they made, I think less than two. <laughs> But one could deduce that because it was such a bust, it is now free on uh, Peacock. So if you wanna watch it, don't give any money to Mel Gibson. Cause again, he sucks. Allegedly, not really. It's not super alleged. <laughs> or of course you can sit back, relax and watch with me like you do every week. There's so many people that have told me that I've become like a part of their weekly routine often with like their partner or their children, which <laughs> I don't know, is this child friendly? <laughs> I say all that to say, it's great having you guys to be like a regular viewers of the channel. But this movie is basically an ambitious reimagining of Santa Claus, uh, known in this movie as Kris Kringle, which is also another nickname, yeah, for Santa. Uh, and he's, instead of like this supernatural mythical being or whatever, or like this fanciful thing, he's just like a guy that lives in like Alaska or something with his black wife named Ruth, who is supposed to be Mrs. Claus, which again, the irony does not escape me considering this is Mel Gibson. Side note, if you watched the last video that I made uh, for Bat Movies and a Beat, we were discussing uh, Christmas movie bingo. And despite this movie not being Hallmarkian in any way, it ha it has a lot of the tropes. It does have, it does have like a guy who's crucial to the neighborhood, who runs a business that's about to go under. Um, it just has a lot more like shooting people in the face than average would be. So yes, he's running a toy shop that's about to go under and is attempting to be subsidized by the US government. Within that story, we have a child who has a hit out on Santa and then there's like a shootout. Um, if you can't tell from that synopsis, this movie is played completely straight. Like this movie is a serious film. I've come for your head, fat man! You think you're the first? You think I got this job because I'm fat and jolly? 
there's something about that that is very, very, very appealing to me. Like movies that are so asinine, but played as if they're actual film are kind of a subgenre of film that I found myself really enjoying. What comes to mind is Butt Boy. I should probably link that video down below because you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> But yes, this movie also in a very butt boy-esque manner exists in this in this place where you know this is supposed to be a comedy and, it, and at every turn it just isn't, which is fun. <laughs> Festive, keep you on your toes. But anywho, now that most of my makeup is done because I always do it when I'm rambling, um, this is Fat Man. So the movie begins in the home of child Billy, who is a rich little spoiled brat. He's about 12-ish years old and he lives in this house with servants and is for all intents and purposes completely and utterly emotionally neglected by his family. The only person that he sees from his family semi-regularly is his ailing grandmother. So this emotionally neglected but very very rich little boy has a god complex and an inability to accept that he's not the best at everything. He is a winner which is indicated by him constantly wearing his best in show pins that he got from the science fair at his very prestigious school. There are some really choice scenes that really run home his character very quickly. Your father will not be joining us for Christmas. It's unfortunate. I was really looking forward to seeing John. Meanwhile, we meet Santa, who again in this movie is just some guy named Chris. He lives in the woods with his wife um, and they're both concerned about financial difficulties at their toy shop of sorts, a ranch. It would seem that business hasn't been great because apparently the ranch makes money largely through US government subsidies. Um, and they make this money based off of how many presents they deliver for Christmas. However, because the world's kids have been bad as uh, they haven't been able to deliver presents, only coal, so they don't make enough money off of just coal. We learn that Chris or Santa, I'm gonna call him Santa just to keep it easy, cause who the fuck is Chris? <laughs> we learn that Santa is a bit disillusioned by the world, quite a bit uh, nihilistic, if you will. He's constantly talking about how the world is going to hell in a handbasket and how children are just like running amok these days. We see him in the car listening to the news of some kid that lit their uncle or somebody on fire and throwing bowling balls off of a bridge. I don't know, if you're raising a bunch of kids that are lighting people on fire, that might be some parenting issues. <laughs> anyway, but being that the company does end up resulting in the largest financial surplus during the year, a big boom, trillions of dollars around the world are made via Christmas. The US government was like, we can't have you go out of business. We don't wanna put you out of business. So instead, how about you work with us? We'll form a new deal this year in which you can help us, we'll subsidize you, you'll stay open. More on what that deal is in a bit. <laughs> Back to Billy, much to his dismay, he's actually gotten second place. He's runner up in the science fair that he usually places first in. Again, he's a winner. Being that he's not the best at losing, Billy decides to hire a friend, an assassin. Yes, his. <laughs> they call him Skinny Man in the credits, but they don't really give him a name throughout the movie. So, but I'll refer to him as Skinny Man because like Skinny Man versus Fat Man. But he hires this assassin to kidnap the child so that he can threaten her into telling them that uh, she cheated and that Billy is the rightful winner of the science fair. He threatens her with a 12 volt car battery. <laughs> <laughs> and after such a threat, she does uh, decide to forfeit. Once they have her back home, they threaten her again that if she tells anybody about this, that they will kill her parents and her beloved dog, Jojo Beans. Oh, he also stole from his grandmama and forged checks from her. He does a lot of shit. After such an event, obviously, Billy, he may be deserving of a bit of cold. And thus brings in that uh, iconic scene that I saw from the trailer. And of course, we have this assassin friend. We know him for other reasons. Why not bring him in to kill Santa Claus? Apparently, Skinny Man also has some long held resentment towards Santa. The only thing he had ever gotten from Santa is a very small toy car. It was a long overdue battle between Skinny and Fat Man. So Skinny Man goes on 
a research montage and just general montage that doesn't make much sense. I gotta say, a lot of this movie, filler. I, I, I might touch on that a bit more later, but the, so much of the movie is just people doing shit and, and you think it could be important, but it never comes up again. But we see him working out, eating Peking duck for some reason. I don't know if that's supposed to be representative. Is that is that a reference to something? Am I missing something? This all culminates into him going up to a postal worker who ends up naively giving him too much information on where he can go to find the letters to Santa and he shoots him and takes his uniform to sneak into the post office where he finds the manager and threatens him to give him information on where to find Santa's address. He doesn't know, but he tells him what the PO box is. Um, and then he shoots him and leaves. Merry Christmas. What a jolly spirit is in this place, my God. Side note, this mother kills everybody in this movie. And I just, I, my pet peeve. <laughs> is like people who are supposed to be very smart professionals, dangerous professionals, but they write them to be just stupid as f um, because he is so sloppy for like a hired hitman, killing a bunch of people that don't need to be killed, a bunch of people that leave like a track to him. Like he's killed two people unnecessarily that you definitely couldn't got information from without killing them. Like he's really, he's literally the worst at his job. Messy bitch, like he's also unpleasant and not at all sneaky. I don't know, it just seems very inefficient way to be an assassin. I'm not even giving the assassin pointers. <laughs> this is how you hide a body. <laughs> like, so but now equipped with the address to Santa's um, P.O. box, he goes there to find more clues on how to find the fat man. So we find out that Santa has begrudgingly accepted the proposal of the US government, which apparently is for the next two months, they will be the place where they make fighter jets for the US military. That's a sentence I never thought I would say. Uh, I feel like we just unlocked a new level six conspiracy theory. Did you know that fighter jets are actually made by elves in Alaska? It's only supposed to be a one year thing, but the US government is like, hey, if you want to, we can do this for at least 15 years. Like, come on. He refuses. He says, this is only a one-time deal. So Skinny, after getting a call from Billy who is requesting Santa Claus's head, <laughs> uh, he, he assuages him by saying that he'll bring back his coat as a parting gift instead. But he makes his way eventually finding the grounds of the toy factory and he goes, Again, he kills everybody in sight. Again, for us assassin, you're sloppy. What happened to sneaky? What happened to discretion? You seem impatient. It feels like watching me play a video game that has a stealth mission. Like I ain't got time for this shit. Let's blow it up. That's just me. I'm not a fucking assassin. I'm over here on online COD cussing out a 12 year old for calling me a <laughs> These are not the same. If you're a professional, <laughs> If you're a professional, be professional. Put your professional hat on, sir, you're sloppy. Ain't no way in hell you can tell me this motherfucker ain't never been caught before. If I was if I was on an assassination mission to take out Santa, I would have a little bit more discretion. But after uh, this incredibly proficient assassin kills the entire US military that's on that base, I, I don't know, maybe they also aren't very good at their jobs. Anyway, but somehow this incredibly incompetent man with no face covering was able to sneak up on an entire squadron of military people on a base who are armed and he takes them all out because he's very competent apparently, which ultimately leads in there being this like one-on-one -on -one battle between Santa and skinny man in the snow. And if this weren't this movie, it would have been a pretty cool scene because it's very like cinematic. The whole movie is actually, you know, uh, in a camera work way, very well done. Uh, it's, you know, from the untrained eye, I guess. Um, they have this like monologue where Santa is like, I remember you as a child because he remembers everybody as a child because that's his job to decide whether or not you were good enough to receive presents that um, make you feel loved and appreciate it. But he basically says like, I can't do everything. I couldn't replace your parents. I know I'm overthinking this. I know I'm overthinking this. I just find it very interesting, like how all the kids are being blamed. And it's like, you badass kids when it's obvious that each kid you're going to is like, incredibly neglected. Like sure, Billy's a little shit, but he's not a little shit for no reason. He didn't just pop out the pussy wanting to light people on fire because he's not being affirmed. He's uh, in a narcissistic spiral because he's completely neglected. Like same with this guy, 
I'm sure there's a lot that went down in his life that led to this moment. Like I didn't bring this up in the original recording, but there's a scene where he goes into a random kid and overshares about how he was abused by his parents. And I'm like, damn, imagine being abused by your parents and then getting coal for Christmas. That just, that just seemed, just, does that not seem a bit cruel, no? A little salt in the wound, yeah? It's a rather long scene of them going back and forth. There's some choreography culminating in Santa getting stabbed quite gruesomely, uh, but with a secret knife that uh, Skinny had in his knee, which again is the only discreet thing that he's done the entire movie. He then shoots him in the face. Merry Christmas! The holiday in the air this year. <laughs> Ruth comes out, shoots Skinny, but he doesn't die. He gets shot in like the shoulder or something. And he also gets her one back in the back, but she's able to run inside the house to escape him. Looking in the house, trying to finish her off. But then he gets shot in the face, uh, dying instantly. I'm sorry. She goes out to Santa's presumably dead body, but somehow he is miraculously still alive, which is wild because if you missed it, he just got shot in the face. Again, in this movie, they're not like saying he's some kind of supernatural dude. He's just some guy in the woods, <laughs> but okay, for the purposes, of, but also he's one guy in the woods who literally went to every household in the world in one night. So I guess, you know artistic license. <laughs> but he does lose an eye in the process. And the movie culminates in him going to visit Billy. Uh, when he gets there, he's in the process of trying to drug his grandmother to death. Um, I, 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 from what I, I don't understand why, from what I understand, what I gather is that the grandma was starting to suspect that someone was stealing money from her and she was calling up her people to try to figure out who it was. So before that she could figure out it was Billy, the child, um, he was going to drug her to death. <laughs> in come Santa and Ruth. He drinks the milk, does not die. I guess it just works as a painkiller. Again, artistic license. I don't know what he's supposed to be anymore. But he is now looking to be more proactive in his reprimanding of children instead of just passively saying how children are going all types of crazy ways. Now, he will walk up in your house and tell your ass off, scaring them by taking off his eye patch and saying menacingly, The fat man's got his eye on you, kid. Wow. That's really f***ing dumb, oh my God. But yeah, he basically tells them like, if your grandma dies all of a sudden or any of the people you harassed end up getting hurt, I'm gonna f*** you up. Yeah, and that's basically the end of the movie. I guess the solution to all their problems has always been threatening children all along. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, with that said, this film is actually shockingly uninteresting, um, which is most of the movie is just filler arcs uh, that add nothing and lead to nowhere. A lot of the movie, which I didn't even bring up, is just skinny man going around and being a dick to random people. I guess just to supplement that he's a shit person as well, but, but yeah, it's just him being a dick to random people and having like a pretty impressively diverse playlist as he cruises up to assassinate Santa. <laughs> Overall, it was an interesting concept that fell flat and I think it could have been a decent movie uh, if in the hands of other people, but alas, it has some contribution to the world. It resulted in a Saturday video. <laughs> That's all for today, folks. If you liked today's video, feel free to like today's video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have other bad Christmas movies that you think I should check out for the month of December, feel free to put those down in the comment section. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.